Hi, I'm Barry Johnson. I'm here to talk about the benefits of the potential for, for a flow-through solar thermal water pasteurizer being deployed in the tropics, being deployed virally in a way which means that it's copied, copied and copied by people. Can it really happen? I don't know, but I'd like to see if you can come on board to make it happen. So I'll be quite open about the benefits. There are a range of benefits, not just the health benefits of saving lives, but the social benefits involved and some economic and environmental ones. I will particularise these in some detail. While I'll also look at the features of the product that deliver those benefits and who socially in, in the, within the community benefits most from these because it's a multi-stranded project with a, lum, a number of different people benefiting. But I don't want to just sell you this, I want to talk about the risks briefly as well because it may not succeed. Um, but I'd like to, if you, know, if you can pick up the risks, maybe then you can identify those, neutralise those and make it really fly. The following video is about technology, so let's now look at the benefits. Here's the technology, it's featured in a previous slide, in a previous video, so I'm not going to talk about it in detail now. But it is locally made, virally deployed, and it's a renewable energy appropriate technology, not imported. Zero cost to run. It's a double innovation, this project. Not only is the innovative, appropriate technology that pasteurizes water to save lives an innovative, a really good innovation, but the idea of it viralizing, it being copied with homegrown manufacture and deployment. That's really the top innovation because you can dump as many life-saving life -saving technologies in developing countries as you wish. But if nobody copies those, if you don't break down this intellectual property carcass that, 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 that deadens these projects, if you don't get rid of this and turn it into something living, you won't get the massive deployment that you do get of some technologies such as mobile phones. I want water pasteurization to do the same thing, to viralize really fast. So the key is to give away all, all intellectual property, the design and how to replicate it, so that there are no barriers to making successful systems easily with the people that are there and the tools and equipment that are there. What are the benefits? Well, there are three main kinds of benefits and four features. There are a range of health benefits, some socio-economic benefits and some environmental benefits. And you may be asking, what, just from a solar water pasteuriser? And the answer is, yes, it could happen. And here's how. The big, big benefit is that it kills pathogens. It kills bacteria, viruses, worms, and amoebae and the like. And obviously that could save lives. The previous video, number two, did some calculations on how many it might save. That's obviously saving lives, the key target benefit. Who would benefit most? Children and the elderly would benefit most from not dying from diarrhoea and the like, but so would also immunosuppressed people with HIV. What are the social and economic benefits? Well, happiness, longevity, productivity. Women in particular who will be caring for sick people will gain more time. And environmentally, there'll be a lower pathogen burden on the environment to, to then recirculate the, the cycle of infection. The second of the four features is that the solar water, water pasteurizer could reduce burning of fossil fuels such as kerosene. That means that people won't get skill, um, scalded so much if they're boiling, people are boiling water to, to make it clean. And again, children and women are likely to benefit the most. Socially, that saves money on fuel and stops wealth leaving the community. The impoverishment of rural communities is a big issue and if you can stop money leaving that, money will stay local. And of course, if you're not burning fossil fuels, you will reduce CO2 emissions. But what if people are burning fuel wood instead to heat water? Well, then there'll be still be less chance of scalds, but there'll be less indoor smoke and smog. And you'll get fewer lung problems, because smoke and smog are major killers in developing countries. And again, asthmatics, children and the elderly will benefit the most here. Socially, who's going to benefit? Well, there'll be less time collecting firewood, and that'll probably benefit women and children most of all. Environmentally, it'll reduce deforestation. The fourth benefit is that it's made locally. Health-wise, that's psychological empowerment. Locally doing things benefits everybody. The social and economic benefits are it's affordable, there's no imports or minimal imports, I hope. Ideally, no, let's see what we can do. And there'll be micromanufacture and informal economy benefits to the workers there. Environmentally also, some of the products that can be used in a solar thermal water pasteurizer can be recycled or reused. Possibly you could just use existing roofs or old windows or even fridges could make ideal solar water pasteurizers. 
because they've got the insulation built in. So there's a whole range of benefits here. We're not just saving lives, but that's the top benefit. But there are drill-down benefits that could consolidate this into a massive community operation, which had, would have support in different sectors that would together give it great momentum. So what target populations are there? Well, the clean drinking water particularly benefits children and the elderly and people with HIV. Viral manufacture gives manual workers the opportunities for micro-entrepreneurship. Cleaner air, if it happens, will give asthmatics less, um, less um, problems with health and give them more work time. Firewood collection will give women and children more time. Reduced invalid care will affect everybody, but particularly women again. So many, many people will benefit. The wide positive impact is, I hope, a community ownership of the project, which gives it high chance of success. If this project can accommodate the constraints and opportunities of global cultural variations, because the idea is to deploy this in three different continents, in ten deployments, and to cultivate it being then viralized by supporting people with information on how to do it, ideally by low-cost language-free videos. From an earlier presentation, I looked at the mar mar market viralization simulations, and you can make all sorts of figures um, if the system was viralized and copied. After five years, you could have thousands, hundreds of thousands, a few million, or even a hundred million people saved, depending on how fast the thing copies. Let's see if we can deliver that. I'm not promising anything. I'm just setting the vision here. I'd like you to join me. Saving lives. That's the ideal. But there are lots of risks. The top one, perhaps, is not meeting high expectations, and I've certainly <laughs> raised some of them in, in the earlier slides. Another one is becoming a closed project that doesn't welcome contributions. So many times development projects become, you know, somebody's individual great idea, and nobody wants to trample on them. That will kill the project. Trample on this, take it over. I don't want this project. I want it to, to live, to fly. Coordination could fail. If it's run by committees, they can make bad decisions. They can even, you know, say, oh, we've got a milestone. Let's meet that milestone to spend X money by X time. That becomes more important than the objectives, which are to save lives and get community benefits. If this project is dependent on one person and that person gets hit by a bus, the project may die. I don't want that to happen. I want this to be a, a multiple community type of project. I don't care if it's beaten by the post by another project elsewhere, provided it's that project saves lives sustainably. There's also the risk of the keep going momentum risk of flying a dead duck. If this project is rubbish, let's just bang it on the head. Let's not keep it going because there's an organisation behind it or something like that. Let's just stop it. Of course, there could be a lack of funds. I'm campaigning for diarrhea. I mean, is that really going to get you money? I don't know. But if you turn it around into health, maybe. Solar thermal isn't very sexy either. Funding. We need money. If you know people, set up a foundation, get the money. There are also, of course, on the money subject, issues of budget, budget management going wrong, overspending, that sort of thing. There's also liability challenges. This, ultimately, is the healthcare sector. Does that mean if something goes wrong that the people who design this get sued? I don't want this to stop people making things work. We know that pasteurization kills bugs. We drink pasteurized fruit juice every day. We can pasteurize water just as easily. Another big risk is number 12, not closing the sanitation loop. If you give people clean water but they haven't got good toilets, it's not going to work. Another one is, and this is number 13 perhaps for a reason, it could be the bad luck of the whole thing. If the users aren't motivated to use it, don't understand the germ theory of disease, don't appreciate general hygiene, it's not going to work. So how is it initially deployed? Should it go through schools, hospitals and so on? Because if it can be deployed in areas where the concept of viralization, of education, of spreading the word is already there, that will help it happen faster. There are technical issues about making sure that you get the right dose response in terms of temperature and time for the pathogens in the system. I'm pretty sure that can be sorted, but it does need to be looked at carefully. Are there any risks of being over-successful? I don't know. If this project works, and it's only an if, you know, not just the diagram is a hypothetical diagram, there could be other designs, um, the diagram of the, of the technology, but, um, but there are also you know, different models of deployment. But here's one, that there's a benefactor. 
that shares the vision and the majority of costs. And I've used the word singular for benefactor, not plural, because if you have lots of benefactors, they sometimes try to impose too many constraints. But some money, if it's unconditional, from anybody, will be great. If there's a UK project, it doesn't have to be a UK project, then maybe a university or a non-government organisation could initiate the project with a three-continent rollout, ideally deploying at least ten systems across those continents which would edit then and host the videos, have a multilingual website and a know-how database so that any perfection, any little tweak, any, any word of warning can be passed on quickly. Then we'd have national and regional coordinators in those three continents doing the local contextualizing, contextualizing, testing the manufacturer, making sure the quality is fine and making sure the replication happens fast and offering local, locally important um, advice on website editing. And then at the deployment level, we've got manufacturer, operation, replication, product use, and everything that feeds back up into the system. Now, this is maybe too top-down, but people ask for a model, so here's a model. Try and improve it. My mission is to see if solar water pasteurizing can save lives, not by being a, an imported technology, but being a homegrown, locally made, loved, enthused technology. I'm Barry Johnson. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next one is about the technology itself.